video, we're going to take a look at what is a TCP keep alive. So if you found this video, no doubt this is something you've seen in Wireshark or some other packet analyzer. And you may be interested, is, it, is this a, a drastic issue that's happening on the network? Does this indicate a network issue, an application issue? How should I interpret these packets? Well, here you can see on your screen, clearly we have some TCP keep alive uh, lines going across the screen. These are TCP keep alive packets. And just at first look, these look pretty bad. It looks ugly. We see this black line, we got this red text. Is this an error that we should dig into and investigate? Well, the bottom line is it really just depends on when a TCP keep alive happens. Now, first, let's talk about what it is and why it's built, and then we'll go into some of the uh, scenarios that we may find these in. And last, we're going to talk about when we should uh, be concerned about these. Now, to just talk, take us through this one transaction, this is just a simple client-server connection. It's using a web-based application, and the client is doing a request, and it's getting a response. We see these issues. So first of all, we see that a packet goes, this first packet, this is a SYN packet. This is coming from a client to the server, and it's sending. It's trying to open up a, a port for 3333 on the server. It's sending its sequence number and other information in that SYN packet. This is just a standard way that a client goes and initiates a connection. Well, the next packet down, almost 100 milliseconds later, we see the server come back with a SYN ACK. That means that the server is listening. It does hear on that port, and it's willing to talk back to the client. It has the capacity. It has the resource. It's able to open up a connection. And finally, we see an acknowledgement packet from the, go from the client to the server, and now this is our standard TCP handshake. See, now that TCP connection is open and available for that client to use to send data to its partner, to send data to that server. Now, what is it trying to send? Now, the client, it sends a GET. It's asking for uh, a file or it's sending a request to that server. This is data that the client needs to be able to send to the user's application that they're using. And here we see in this first packet, if we notice the length, this is a 1514 byte packet. If we add the FCS, error, uh, FCS uh, header on that Ethernet frame, this would actually be a full size frame, 1518 bytes. So this is a full size packet and it has what I call trickle bytes that go down into the next packet. So the request was so big that the client had to break it up into two packets and send those to the server. Now notice here we're still not terribly long into this transaction, uh, just over 100 milliseconds or so. And finally we get an acknowledgement, we do hear an acknowledgement back from the server. The server is acknowledging our get. It's saying 106 milliseconds later, that's our network round trip time, the reason why we know that is because it's about the same amount of time as our initial network round trip time that we saw in the handshake. So we see this 106 milliseconds come back. This is acknowledging our get. This tells us that the server has our request and it's processing that request. We just haven't heard any data back yet from the server. So this is where our TCP keep alive comes in. See, the client waits 45 seconds. For, this is 45 full seconds and it still hasn't heard anything back from that server in terms of data. So what happens on the client side is the client maintains this TCP timer that will eventually time out and the client will have to shut down this connection. That's it due to inactivity if that connection isn't being used. Well, before it gets that bad, the client first wants to know, hey, Mr. Server, are we still talking? Are we still having a conversation? So the client sends a keep alive, and that's why it's called a keep alive. It's keeping this TCP connection up and active so it doesn't have to shut it down. So we send it's a 64 byte, it's a small packet that gets sent to the server. One byte of data is sent to the server. Then the server comes back and acknowledges that 100 milliseconds later. The server says this is... This is a TCP keep alive ACK. If I scroll down just a little bit, you can see that ACK word there. All right, so this is the server coming back and saying, yes, I am here. I heard you. We're still active, and Mr. Application up above me is still working on that response. So sit tight. Okay, so the client does. It waits another 45 seconds of inactivity. So here we can see that the client has a 45-second keep alive timer. As soon as that 45 seconds expires, the client, if it hasn't heard anything from the link partner, it's going to try to keep this connection open. It sends another keep alive. 
which again gets acknowledged in about the network round trip time that we expect, the initial network round trip time in the handshake. And finally, see 18 seconds after we see this, TC, this Keep Alive ACK, we finally see a response from the server. Now this packet actually has data in it. It's a TCP 200 OK. This is the response packet that we've been waiting for. And then the subsequent packets after this are all involved in that response. So up to this point, we've waited 108 seconds. I come over here to my timer that starts at the beginning of the conversation and runs. It's a running total. So here we've been waiting 108 seconds for this application to get back to us. So in this specific case, see the Keep Alive didn't want to shut the TCP connection down before the response came back. So those T TCP Keep Alives were critical in making sure that we would keep this connection open. Now, what's to blame for this delay? It's certainly not the network. We don't see any retransmissions. We don't see any significant changes in the amount of network round trip time. This is 100% due to application performance. The application was sitting on this for 108 seconds. What it was doing, we don't know from this position. We can get another capture file for that. But we can clearly see the nature of keep alives and what they do based on this trace. Now again, are they good? Are they bad? simply messengers. They're telling us that this connection should not be shut down. Now we might also see TCP keep alive uh, packets flowing, by, flowing around uh, in a backend environment in an application. Sometimes when like an application server needs to talk to a database server, maybe there simply have not been uh, client requests coming into the system and that application server wants to keep TCP connections open with the backend database. That way when a new client connection or a new client request comes into the system, the application server doesn't have to resend a, a SIN, SIN, ACK, ACK. We don't have to suffer this overhead. We can just send the, the request, whatever it may be, onto the wire immediately. So uh, this tells us also that it's also possible that the remote peer, the server, it's gone offline or there's been a network error and the client hasn't heard back from it. So if we never heard these TCPs I'm sorry, these Keep Alive acknowledgments, if we never saw these come back from the server and we just saw these Keep Alives from the client, well, that could indicate that there's a network issue or that that server went offline. So again, hopefully this was helpful in what is a TCP Keep Alive, why they're generated, and when they're an issue. Uh, a lot of times they look a lot scarier on the screen than they really are. In many cases, they're simply benign packets in, uh, designed to keep that TCP connection open. So thank you for tuning into this video and stay tuned for more tips and tricks on how to use Wireshark to troubleshoot network and application performance problems. Thank you for watching this video by Packet Pioneer. If you're experiencing network or application performance problems and you need help resolving them, please get in touch with us at www.packetpioneer.com or by sending us an email at packetpioneer at gmail.com.